hey guys welcome or welcome back to my channel my name is molly and today i'm going to be doing a really fun video i'm really excited about um i'm going to be rereading the boys of tommen series but basically i'm only going to be rereading the first and second book so if y'all don't know what the boys of tommen is um it's a series it's four books right now but the fifth one is coming out in april yeah april um and so the first two books follow shannon and johnny and then the second two books follow shannon's brother joey and then um joey's love interest Eva. and so the first two are like interconnected the second two the first two are connected first book second book the second two books are technically interconnected to the first book um saving six happens before binding 13 and then redeeming six technically happens at the same time of binding and keeping 13. people always say i don't think okay Actually, I don't know what I was about to say. But anyways, I thought that it would be fun to do a little reread. Um, and I was actually looking at my like Instagram Goodreads from last year. And I actually think I read these books at the exact same time last year. Um, because this time last year I was coming back from study abroad. I studied abroad in Ireland. And yesterday was St. Patrick's Day. So, you know, where's my... I had a little head bobber for St. Patrick's Day yesterday, but I don't know where it is. I think it's in the closet. Um, this was literally like the same time I read Binding 13 for the first time. And now I'm going to be rereading it. And I just thought it would be so fun to like do a reread because Taming 7 is coming out in April. And I've wanted to do a reread of these two for a while because genuinely... Johnny and Shannon, I think, are one of my favorite book couples um, out of all the romance books I've read and all the book couples that I've read. I think I genuinely connect the most other than I love Joey and Eva, but there's just something about Johnny and Shannon that I just love so much. I just love Johnny. Johnny is like, ugh, my fave. I love him so much. Um, but if you don't know what these are, so these follow a group of friends basically and they all live in Ireland and um it's like Cork Ireland it's like a small town in Cork I can't remember where in Cork mm. it's like Blarney maybe Blarney something like that somewhere in Cork um Ireland and it takes place in 2005 so like early 2000s and it just follows these group of friends and they go through a lot of shit um these books are romance technically but they honestly I was describing this to someone almost like Degrassi not that like it's anything it's almost like Degrassi in the way that it like follows those characters for a long period of time and there's romance in it and it's kind of like similar struggles and kind of like a similar layout um it follows all the characters through a lot of different things that they go through shannon and joey they have a very difficult home life and a very difficult family life um and johnny is a rugby player and he is going through like a pretty bad injury and he's also kind of going through a lot of stuff and I just love these books too because I read them at the perfect time last year where it was I had just come home from Ireland and um, the language in these books, I know a lot of people this turns them off because of the language used in the books, but Chloe is Irish, she's Irish born, so she uses a lot of Irish slang which I just like I remember when I read them for the first time it literally sounded like I was talking to like my Irish friends like they would say things and I was like oh my god that is like blah 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 um like literally uh Gibsy who is Taming Seven the like main guy he reminds me of one of my friends 
and like Johnny and Shannon they remind me of some of my friends and so it's like these books I just love because they remind me of like that time in my life and I've also been very reminiscent and homesick I guess <laughs> can you be homesick for a place that you technically like I mean I lived there but like not for a long amount of time for Ireland and for like Dublin um and I've been looking at the pictures a lot because obviously St. Patrick's Day was yesterday so a lot of people are like posting about like Ireland and St. Patrick's Day and all that um and I actually was showing one of my coworkers pictures from last year and I was like I miss Ireland so much y'all and I miss all of the experiences and it just the weather is starting to feel like how it felt last year everything is starting to kind of like be similar and so I'm very like oh my gosh I miss I miss Ireland and I just remember like when coming home and anyone who studied abroad when you first come home from studying abroad it is the most like reverse culture shock like you're just like I what <laughs> especially going from like a big city and not that I live like in the middle of the nowhere but I live with my parents I live in a suburb so it's very different I can't like walk everywhere I don't take a bus everywhere like it's I drive and I can't just walk to a bar to go out with my friends like I have to like plan a whole experience so I'm definitely very reminiscent of Ireland and I'm just so excited to read these books because I really want to get back into the experience and back into this world. This video also I decided I think is going to be full spoiler so if you have not read the first two books or honestly any of Boys of Tommen I'm probably going to be talking about the second two books too um, which are Saving and Redeeming Six. If you have not read any of those books I really recommend not watching this video um, if you plan on ever reading those books. I mean you can still watch it. I've watched spoiler reading vlogs and then have gone on to read the books and it hasn't affected me but this is just your warning right now if you are planning on reading the Boys of Tom series which you should because it's literally one of the best series in the world don't watch this video. Just go read it and then you can come back and watch it. But this is also too for those people who are really excited for Taming 7 and you don't want to go and reread all the books. I got you. We're going to read these. Um, I also read Redeeming 6 in January so that's still kind of like fresh in my brain. So I'm also excited to like go back because like I said, um, Redeeming 6 happens at like the same time as these books but... To me, a lot of people, I know some people had a lot of like hard time with Redeeming and Saving Six because they're like, oh my god, it's so similar to Binding and Keeping. I don't think it was similar at all. I think Chloe did very well of like separating the two storylines and the two like things, even though they're literally happening at the same time. I think she did a really good job of like giving the characters time to kind of like tell their own story. And obviously, like, it's all happening at the same time, but the people that it's happening to are different and the some of the things that are happening are different. So I'm excited to go back and read these now that I know what I know after reading those two books. If you know, you know. Um, so I'm so excited. But yeah, so let's get into it. We're obviously going to start with Binding 13. <laughs> so excited. I'm so excited. Um, I'm also probably going to turn on a Shannon and Joey playlist because if you don't know, I think it's at the beginning, it might be at the end, they have a playlist, it might be at the end, yeah, playlist for Shannon and people have made it on Spotify, so I think I'm going to go on Spotify and listen to this yeah so i'm so excited but we're gonna get into the world of boys of tom and again um i don't know how long these books are gonna take me to read these are like pretty long books we're also gonna be reading out of the bloom editions these are the u.s editions i do have the original indie irish publications um from when she like first published them but I, I've already read out of those and I've never read out of these so I want to like kind of annotate them a little bit. I don't know how long this is going to take me to read. These are both like 700 page books um, respectively and I have kind of a busy week. Not like a super busy week but I mean it's the first week after spring break so 
it's always kind of a little bit of a shit show. So who knows, but we're just gonna get into it. I'm gonna stop talking and we're gonna get into reading. <laughs> So I'm in the scene where she like, she leaves her phone in the bathroom and then she like goes back to get it and then she's like walking like back to class or whatever. And this is when she like get hit, gets hit by the rugby ball and <laughs> she's like looking at the pitch and she's like looking at the like hill she has to walk on and she's like cutting across the pitch was the logical thing to do girl girl why would that be the logical thing to do what are you doing get off the pitch jesus christ fucking girls move will you like obviously you're gonna get hit by a fucking rugby ball why are you walking across the pitch like i love you shannon but like what the fuck okay it is so so much later um i went to class and then i came home had dinner and now I'm reading some more. We're on page 120. I forgot how much I love Johnny and Shannon. And like, I love Joey and Aoife too. That's like the other couple in this like series. I don't know. Chloe keeps talking about like, Chloe's the author, about how many like books she's gonna do, like how many. Apparently at first it was like six or seven, I think, like six or seven books. So I think, honestly, I think Gibsy and Claire might be the last couple, low key, because each couple so far has had two books and it's going to be, if it's going to be six books, then it's going to end with Claire and Gibsy. I don't know, but she also was talking about doing like Huey maybe, like Huey... And like Lizzie, not together, but like their perspective relationships, um, doing like their relationships too. I don't know, but y'all, I forgot how much I love these Johnny and Shannon. They are like, to me, the epitome of like cute puppy love relationship. Obviously, like there's a lot of very tough shit that happens in this book like there's a lot of like hard topics that go on but the two of them their relationship is like so cute so pure like they're literally just adorable they so it's like the um one of the matches it's like the big match where they get like their picture taken which the shit storm that's about to happen from that i know i think that's in like a couple pages um, but when they like talk to each other for the first time and she's like, I don't know if you remember me. And he's like, yeah, Shannon, like the river. And then she like is like awkward. She doesn't know what to say. So she's like, hi, Johnny. And he's like, hi, Shannon. And then like the crumbs we get of Claire and Gibsy. And then like it makes it so much better because you get so many crumbs of them in like saving and redeeming six i'm so excited for taming seven. Oh my gosh because i don't know how she is like formatting taming seven like to me it feels like it needs to be two books because if she's like going over all the stuff that happens like in these books and like the next two books like the next three books then it's gonna be like i mean saving six and redeeming six redeeming six and Binding and Keeping 13 all happen at the same time and Saving Sex isn't really a part of like the younger kids stories. I mean sort of like not really. I don't know how far like how Taming 7 is gonna go like because I know the first chapter I've read like the excerpt of the first chapter and it looks like 
it's gonna be like a lot of flashbacks which i'm so excited to like see more about like his dynamic but this book this video is not about that but i'm just like obsessed with him obviously um but he is just the sweetest little guy ever and he's like i mean he's kind of an asshole like obviously he's a fucking rugby player he's 17 all 17 year old athletes are assholes but he is the sweetest to her like first off after the whole thing with like her getting like hit by the ball which i don't think i talked about that her getting hit by the ball on the like rugby match or the rugby like field whatever um him like warning off everyone and being like if you say anything about her like fuck you and then bella was mentioned which like girl god that's a content warning in its own like freaking bella um talking about her and like all these different like all these different things like coming back and i'm like i definitely the writing i didn't realize how different her writing kind of is like her writing style it does give kind of wattpad but like not in a bad way and i think it's genuinely because i've been reading so many like literary fiction lately and like non-fiction books fantasy books like this is the first romance book i picked up since like i th think when I read like Magnolia Parks like that was like the last time and I read Burning Light Hearts like in February like early February so that's the last time I picked up like a romance book and I think it might be that I don't know but I'm just having like it took me a minute to kind of like adjust to it and I think if it was my first time reading it that would have been a turn off but like I don't know I remember when I first started reading it it didn't take me any time to adjust so I think it might just because I like took a break from romance but I'm like just loving it so much and I'm listening to their playlist um in the back of the book Chloe made them like a playlist or well it's like Johnny makes a mixtape for Shannon I think he makes it for her birthday or something but the playlist is in like the back of the book and a lot of people have made it like on Spotify and it's just it's literally the best because it's also a bunch of like um very like nostalgic songs because it's back from like 2000 like this literally took place in 2005 which is crazy to me because it's like like the date on the f like first chapters it was January 10th 2005 so like this takes place like back in 2005 which is crazy like i saw a tiktok somewhere where people were saying like if the characters from boys of tom it, like that when like people were talking about how like sometimes it's hard for me to like realize that book characters aren't real i don't do that with any other book characters except for the boys of tom in books and i think it's genuinely because the boys of tom in, like a they're just like normal high school students like, other than, like, Johnny being, like, a big hurler, or, like, not hurler, a big, like, rugby player, but, like, even then, rugby is only, like, a big thing in, like, Ireland. And then also, they be, like, white. If they're 17, 25. Damn it, I'm so bad. My brother's 19, yo. So, 17 plus 19. They be, like, in their 30s, like, early 30s. So, like, to me, they feel like real people, because it'd be, like, they obviously like wouldn't be the same that they were in the book you know i don't know if that makes any sense but also the way that she writes them she just like writes them so real and i love i forgot how funny this this book is just so funny and it's like light heart not i don't know how to describe it like it's like light hearted but at the same time obviously like there's a lot of like very heavy content in it but especially in like the first hundred pages because it doesn't really get into all of like the family life shit until further on. I kind of forgot how she paces it a little bit. With Saving and Redeeming Six, you really don't get that. Like it's from Joey's perspective and I love 
me some Joey Lynch. Like, I love Joey Lynch so much. That's when I say, like, I love Joey and Eva and I love Johnny and Junior, but I love them for different reasons. Joey and Eva to, or jo yeah, Joey and Eva to me are, like, very intense, very, like, crazy, passionate first love. Like, they're, like, the people that they're either going to set you on fire or you're going to love for the rest of your life. Johnny and Shannon to me are like that cute married couple met in high school, high school sweethearts kind of love. Like they're like the first love, like movie dates, holding the door open, old school kind of love. Johnny, Joey and Eva to me are like, we're either going to destroy each other or we're going to build each other up kind of relationship. And I love them for like different reasons. And... But I'm just, like, obsessed with this. Also, because, like, Gibsy's hilarious. I forgot how funny he is in this book. Like, he is just the funniest person ever. Also, the experts, the excerpts that I've read for his book, it's, like, his character is completely different. Which, I've heard someone say that he's, like, one of those characters that is very much, like, he acts super silly and funny and goofy around his friends and then like when he's with like his trusted few or when he's by himself he's like a lot more serious like he's kind of like a multifaceted character it's kind of like a mirror ball um and he kind of is just like very goofy and funny and playful but then on the same side he's like going through all that shit i don't know why i'm turning this into a, like a video just talking about gypsy but as you can tell, I'm really excited for Jamie's Seven to come out. <laughs> like, I'm actually so excited for Jamie's Seven to come out. Ugh, not even funny. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna keep reading for the rest of the night, I think. Also, I have class tomorrow at 8 a.m. <sighs> Literally, I don't know why I decided that would be a good idea um, when I registered for classes back in, what, November, like November, December, something like that. I don't even remember. I think it was November when I registered for classes. Don't know why I thought that was a good idea. Don't know. But anyways, I'm going to finish reading or I'm going to keep reading and then I'll let y'all know my progress probably tomorrow. I don't think I'm going to talk for the rest of the night, but this was an 11 minute clip and I look really freaking tired. I am really freaking tired, honestly. Okay. Bye. Okay. <laughs> hey, guys. It is now... Oh, my God, what day is it? It is now Tuesday. Oh, you can't see me. It is now Tuesday. It's day two of reading this book, and... I love them so much. Oh my god, I love them so much. Um, I don't even know the last thing I talked about. But a lot has happened. Her birthday, she's gone to his house twice now. This is like when she meets his mom, which I love his mom, by the way. When she meets his mom. And then I completely forgot this happened, but she kisses him and he doesn't kiss her back johnny johnny wake the fuck up like he's literally obsessed with her and she kisses him and he just like freezes up oh my god but yeah i'm on page like 424 honestly i might finish this tonight i've been reading this so fast so i'm gonna keep reading and let you know okay i'm on the surgery scene <laughs> If you know, you know, like, the post-surgery scene. I mean, it's my favorite thing ever. He goes, oh, fuck, am I dying or something? His dad says, no, Johnny, love, you're not dying. Think fuck, because I want to see that girl again. Okay, Johnny, just relax, buddy. No, no, da, I'm serious. I think I love that girl. Well, who's this girl? She's a river. I'm keeping her, da. Okay, son, you keep that girl. She makes my heart go like, woo. Is that right, he moves? So bad, da. Boom, boom, boom. Fucking boom. All the time. Oh my god. <laughs> okay, 
Hey guys, it's Molly and it is now Wednesday. So it is day three of this video. And guess what? What happened last night? I finished Finding 13. Um, oh my God. Oh, I love these characters so much. That's all, it was five stars for me. I just, I just love these characters so much. I think my final consensus of like the reread for Binding 13 is I definitely picked up on a lot of details that I didn't pick up on the first time. And also, I don't know if I said this, but there was an extended scene in this book, um, which honestly, like when I saw that, like it, it didn't say chapter number, it said just extended scene. I don't know if that was in the original book or if it was just in this edition, because this is the Bloom edition. I low-key like want to go back and see if it was because I was like, I read it and then I was like, I can't remember if that was in the first book because I read this book a year ago and I think it was because I read it so fast the first time because I was just so obsessed with the book immediately that I just like, I think I finished the book literally in like two days. And it was like a 607 page book, 700 page book. It is insanely big. And I finished it in two days first time I read it. I finished it in two days on my reread. So like I'm obsessed with this book. But I was saying like as I was going through it, obviously like the big details, I remember like the big things. And then obviously like the will you be my friend sharing the river and like the whole scene that I was talking about last night about him in the hospital when he goes like boom to fucking boom. I remember all of that obviously, but there were like small minute details that I didn't remember and I really liked going back and like reading those and then also just like the conversations with not just between Johnny and Shannon but between like Johnny and his mom, Johnny and Gibbsy, Shannon and Joey, Shannon and Claire and Lizzie like all the side characters Chloe just gives so much personality to. I feel like sometimes in romance books authors can kind of get stuck in the rut of doing like sidekicks like sidekick characters which are kind of like they don't give a lot of backstory or personality to their characters to their side characters and I know that's like usually because they're trying to focus all their energy on the main character and a lot of romance books as of late I feel like are interconnected standalone so the side characters usually have their own book and in this series too like I don't know if Lizzie's getting her own book but obviously Claire and Gibbsy are Aoife and Johnny, Aoife and Joey already have their own books. Um, but I love just how in detail she goes into all these characters and it just makes them feel so much more real. Like it makes the characters feel real. It makes the school feel real. It makes the friendships feel real because you know more about these characters and you know things that happened in their past. You know like why they are the way that they are. And I really do think friendships make you who you are and the friendships and family relationships that Johnny and Shannon have really developed them as characters. Like the relationship that Shannon and Joey have, the relationship that Johnny has with his parents, the relationship that Shannon has with her best friends. Like those are all very fundamental relationships that I think really develop who they are as characters. And obviously if you read this book, you know how this ends. I forgot it ended on that line. Like this is gonna be like a huge spoiler. Obviously I've been talking about so many spoilers, but it goes, don't apologize, my brother spat out. Protect your children and put them out. Joey, I make a choice, ma'am. Joey snarled as he glared down at her mother, him or us. Him or us, like he just like ends the book on that. And it's just like, oh my God. I remember the first time I read this, I didn't buy the second book. Cause I had gotten this book for Christmas originally and I had studied abroad. I felt like I didn't read it before I left. Obviously I wasn't gonna bring it with me because it was a, the original book. I need to show, I mean, obviously like, if you know, if you've read this book before, you know what the original books look like. They're little bricks, like they're huge. And so I didn't want to bring it with me. So I didn't read it until I got home from study abroad. And I remember I read it literally in two days. And then I was like, oh my God, I need the next book. And it, this was before it was traditionally published in the US. So I had to order on Amazon and it took up like two weeks for it to come in. And I remember I would not stop thinking about this book until I got to read Keeping 13. And 
this was just so much better because I got to go as soon as I finished Binding 13, I got to go immediately into Keeping 13. I started last night. I am now on page 81. Ugh, this book, y'all. I, I forgot how much shit happens in the first 80 pages. I've said this, I don't know if I've said this like online, but I said this to one of my friends once. Reading a Boys of Tommen book is, you feel like hungover after you finish it. And it's not just because of like the book hungover, but so much happens in such a short span of time. Like this whole book takes place over like a month. Actually, wait. It, yeah, it takes place over like three months span. And that feels like a long amount of time, but it's really not. The amount of shit that happens in this book, this is a 700 page book. It takes place over three months. This book takes place over probably two-ish months, not even that much. And there's a lot of time skips in this too. So it's actually only like a month of like actual stuff happening. And that's the same with this. And like every chapter, there's something going on. There's something happening. There's some kind of like event or something. And that's why I say it reminds me of Degrassi. Because I remember every episode of Degrassi, like something crazy would happen and then it would just like finish. That's kind of what this book feels like. I feel like every time I finish a chapter, it's like you're finding something out, something happened, something like someone said something, like something is going on. It's insane and crazy. And that's what these, this is how these books feel like Degrassi to me. I was a Degrassi kid if you couldn't tell. <laughs> I watched Degrassi when I was like 13. But um, I don't know. And talking about this book, I hate their mom. I have like... I have such mixed feelings about their mom. Also, Georgia by Phoebe Bridgers, I think so accurately describes Joey's relationship with his mom. Like that song to me is like Joey, Aoife, and Marie is like their connection because Marie is like, she got pregnant with Darren when she was 14, right? And she married this guy who she kind of knew he was a scumbag before they got married. Like I, like, she tries to say, she tries to be like, oh, your father wasn't that bad before, like, he just turned bad. But then, like, when everyone else describes um, Teddy, they all talk about, oh, that Teddy Lynch, like, he was always, he was always an issue. He was always a problem. And it's like, everyone else but her knows that Teddy was never a good person. I think she knew that, too. But she spent so long making excuses for him that it just became like second nature to her. And Darren just came back, which I have like a different level, not appreciation for him, but I have a different understanding of him after I read Redeeming Six. Because when he talks, if you ever read Redeeming Six, skip for a little bit, but when he goes to see Joey in rehab and he talks to him about their family and like growing up and why Darren left it like you kind of can see it from a different perspective you're like Darren was 18 he was going through this horrible thing his parents kept telling him he was a mistake constantly and no he didn't get like hit and beat and all these things like his siblings but every single entity of him was considered wrong and a mistake by both of his parents so obviously his only like consensus is like, I need to go away, I need to leave. He's 18, he just leaves. And Joey, I think was there and saw all of it. It wasn't as bad as when Darren was there. And the thing that happened to Darren and Carrie, like obviously he's very fucked up and he just is coming back in. He's trying to protect them as much as he can. And, oh my God. And Marie like, projecting onto Johnny and just like everything and I just love you know Kavanaugh so much like I just love him so much but yeah that's where I'm at I'll give y'all an update when I read some more hey guys oh you can't see me hello everybody I just walked in the door from Target it is now Thursday which is like day four of this video um I don't have the book with me. Let me go grab it. One second. This is the book. Obviously, you'll have seen it. 
I'm on chapter 54 and I'm like so far into this book. I got so far last night. I've just been so obsessed getting back into this world. Honestly, if you have not read Binding and Keeping 13 yet or like any of the boys Tommen, which if you're watching this video, you probably should because I've been spoiling so bad. But if you haven't, literally go, like, what are you doing with your life? Go read them. They, I don't know. These people just feel so real to me. And I'm on page 399, so I'm almost 400 pages in. And I just, literally, I know some people complain about how long these books are, but I could probably read like 600 pages more that's how much i love these characters how much i love this writing i feel like the banter just makes it go by so fast and even like the dull moments i think are so fun and funny and like the characters just make it so funny and they're so great i just love them so much but the part that just happened was when johnny picks up the kids and takes them to his house and i want like a book on which i think she said she was gonna do like a novella of Edel and which apparently there's a novella a binding 13 novella which i need to read i will go read i don't know if it is Edel and john's story i don't know what it is but i'll probably go read it after this honestly it's on kindle i think it's not on kindle unlimited i think you have to buy it but i will buy it um but it's on there. It's like 100 pages, I think. It's like a novella. Um, but anyways, I want a story from Edel or Edith or whatever her name is. And I think it's Edel. Edel and John's point of view, who are like Johnny's parents. I want their point of view because the thing just happened like when, they, when the kids came over. And Johnny's like, are you going to do something about it? And they're both looking at each other, like the parents looking at each other. And Edel's like... John, like, when are we actually going to do it? And I know in my back of my head, like, what they're talking about. They're talking about, like, a, like planning to foster. Because they end up fostering. I think they end up adopting them. I'm not really sure. They foster to adopt. I know. Th I think they adopt the little boys. I don't think. Obviously, they don't adopt Joey because he's 18. But I think they get in the process of adopting Shannon. But then they don't because, like, that would be weird. Um, but, like, they... Um, they're like talking about it. And I know in my back of my head, like what is happening. I'm like, I want their point of view because her seeing those kids for the first time. And she like, obviously she's been hearing about it, like from Johnny, from like everybody, like she knows what's going on in that house, but then actually meeting those kids and meeting Sean and meeting Tag and meeting Ollie and just being like, oh, like it's real. Like that shit is real. Like it's actually happening to them. And these are the kids that it's happening to. And when John walks into the room and all three of those kids start like getting so scared because they're scared of men because they've never had any sort of positive reinforcement with like grown men and they all get like super scared of him. And like Johnny points it out and Johnny's like they're terrified of men. The only reason they're not terrified of me and Gibbsy is because of Joey because Joey is the same age as Gibbsy and Johnny. Oh my god. Oh my god. I just can't. And then I went to Target today and I got, they had Saving Six, which this seems so small. This is so much smaller than this one, I feel like. Like, look, it's so much smaller. Um, I got Saving Six. I don't think I'm going to do a reread of them just because I read this book not that long ago. Like, I read Taming Seven this year. Like I said, I read it in January. And I read Saving Six. I think I read Saving Six in July? No, May. I read Saving Six in like May of last year, which I guess I could reread it, but I feel like I'm so, I don't know. I might reread it. But if I reread it, I feel like I'm gonna wanna reread Taming Seven if I already read that this year. So I don't know, but, or not Taming Seven, Redeeming Six. But I'm like slowly collecting all of the bloom editions because i obviously have binding and keeping 13 and then i'm getting this and then i'm going to new york next week which i don't think i'm gonna vlog it but i think i am gonna do like a book haul after like when i get home so i always buy so many books when i'm in new york um and the bookstore that i like go to every time i go to new york which is the rip bodice which if you're in brooklyn 
should go. I love it. It's woman owned. They're so cute and sweet and it is literally the cutest bookstore ever. And they have like the best stuff. They have so many indie published books too. Um, but I saw on their Instagram that they have Redeeming Six. And I like can't find Redeeming and Saving Six anywhere. Like this is the first time I found Saving Six and I found it at Target. And I like can't find Redeeming Six anywhere. But I know they have it at Rebottis. So I'm going to get it when I'm at Rebottis. Hopefully they still have it by the time I'm there. Hopefully. Um... But yeah, that's basically my update. I'm going to keep reading. I do have to work today. I work at like three. So I'm going to eat and then I'm going to keep reading um, until I have to go to work. So I guess I'll update you guys again maybe before I leave. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I just I feel like this has been... Oh, Taylor Swift posted. <laughs> I've been reading like so much more than I expect myself to read because I'm honestly I've been kind of busy this week like this is the first week after spring break so there's been like a lot of school stuff and also I'm like working so much and then there's like family stuff and like I just didn't really expect myself to like read this much but I like every time I sit down I go blow through at least 200 pages like this morning I woke up this morning on page I think I was on page like 100 when I went to bed last night I woke up this morning I got to page 400 before I went to Target. And I also like did a full online quiz this morning. I edited a YouTube video. I was on Instagram for like an hour. I think I only read for like an hour and a half maybe. And I got, got through like 200 pages. Like what? Molly? I don't know. But um, I will let you guys know the next time. I don't know when something big happens baby I'll like let y'all know I do keep thinking about I did kind of like trick myself earlier because their dad got out of like custody care I forgot about when they saw him at the movie theater I completely forgot about that so I was like oh the fire scene is coming like the fire scene is coming if you know you know um but I was like wait there's like 600 other things that happened like before that and the fire scene, I'm pretty sure, is in, like, the last... It's coming up. I know it's coming up. Like, it's, like, soon. <sighs> Reading that from Joey's point of view, when he thinks they're all dead because he doesn't know that they're not in there, that breaks something in you. That really breaks something in you. That book broke me. That's all. I'll let you all know. A little bit of an update. It's obviously hours, hours later. Um, I went to work, came home, ate dinner, changed into my PJs, and we are about to get right back into Keeping 13, but I wanted to do a little bit of a plot update. Um, so the Bella Wilkinson thing just happened, and oh my god, I knew it was coming, obviously, like, I remember it from my first time reading this book, and I knew kind of I remember my emotions when it first happened because I remember like it kind of came out of nowhere with Chloe Walsh's writing this is kind of the same with um Jessa Hastings writing very similar um the way that they write it's very like up and down kind of thing like something good will be happening blah, 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 and then like something really 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 bad will happen and then something really really good and something really really bad so it's kind of like a loop-de-loop -loop little moment um and like some good things happened and then the Bella Wilkinson thing happened and that really came out of nowhere because she's been building up so much for their dad coming back and like Teddy and all of that situation and I feel like she almost just kind of threw the Bella Wilkinson thing in there. I mean, I understand why she did it, but at the same time, it was like Bella kind of disappeared off the face of the earth. And then she just like all of a sudden kind of like brought her back. And I still got just as pissed off at reading that as I did the first time. Um, but I just love it is the epitome of the found family moment when after it like all happens and then they're like sitting outside the headmaster's office and Bella and Cormac I think that was his name Cormac they're both like 
we're gonna get you like and then they were like asking about the girl and like <laughs> Gibbsy, Huey, and Feely are all like what are you talking about like what girl and obviously like, they're talking about Eva but they're like what girl like I don't I don't know what you're talking about and then Gibbsy is even like and I'm pretty sure Cormac hit first and Joey was just defending Johnny and then like John Cavanaugh Mr. Cavanaugh he like comes in and like is like I'm gonna be representing counsel for like the Lynch family like this should not be happening like like it was like literally just like such a fundamental moment in the book I think because that is the first time like even with Darren I mean Darren is a full grown man he's like what 27 they never say his age but I think he's like 26 27 and even he like this is the first moment for them that like a parental figure has actually like stepped up and like actually done what they've been supposed to do and so it's just it's funny but it's sad at the same time kind of seeing like Shannon and Darren having very similar reactions and just all of the reactions to the Lynch children to the Kavanaugh's because obviously they were not raised like Johnny was like they were not raised with the same parents at all in any sense of the word and the way that they all kind of react to John and Edel the way that they kind of just like react to them and they're like we just don't like they just don't even understand how to like process that or that kind of relationship with a parent and it's just like so interesting to me and then obviously like, we had the first time scene and everything when Edo comes in and it's like yeah it was embarrassing and yeah it was like they had the first talk and everything but at the same time it's like seeing it from another point of view it's like Shannon was like oh my god I was so embarrassed but then at the same time it was like I was just embarrassed like it wasn't there was no like she said but it was obvious that Edel really cared about Johnny like it was obvious that they really care about him I don't know I just am obsessed with this book and I honestly might finish this tonight so I will give you guys updates throughout reading it and if I finish it tonight I'll give you an update okay hey guys it is now Friday um which is like day five of this video but I think today might be my last day. I'm almost done with this book. I think I literally have, I'm on page 630, and there's six, 651. So I have like 20 pages left, like around 20 pages um, to read, and then I'm done. And I'm so sad to say goodbye to them. I mean, it's not really goodbye because Taming 7 comes out in, like, two weeks. And that's, like, really kind of soon. And they're obviously going to be in it because it's Gibbsy and Claire's story. And Gibbsy is Johnny's best friend and Claire is Shannon's best friend. So, obviously, like, they're going to be in it. Which also, when I was reading this, um, I was really, I think I said this last night, too. When I was reading, like, while I'm reading it, there's so many, like, little Claire scenes, little Claire and Gypsy scenes, that I guess I never really picked up on on the first time, because obviously I was focusing on Johnny and Shannon, and the second time around, I'm focusing on it so much more, that it, like, it's leading perfectly into Taming 7. I think Taming 7, Loki, is going to take place during Keeping 13, because there's so many scenes in Keeping 13 that are, like, very Claire, Claire and Gibbsy and I hope we get like the summer because the summer when Johnny goes on tour with like the ropey guys you never really get anything from that summer like obviously you get like kind of like glimpses into it but you don't get like the whole thing and I really miss it but I miss so I didn't tell y'all about like so much stuff I think the five well, like read the fire scene last night which is when they like blow up the house. So I can't believe that's real. Like what the fuck? Obviously it's not real. But like can't believe that like actually happened. Um, but like all that and then the funeral. And everything that happened with Joey. And like Johnny going away. And like then Shannon seeing Bella again. Like so much stuff. And it's just like insane. 
how much I love these characters and how much I care about this book. And like, I swear to God, if we don't get a tag book, I think I said this last night, if we don't get a book with tag in it, I'm going to be so mad because he is such a fun character. And like, obviously he's like 13 right now, but like that's the same age that Johnny or Joey and Aoife's book started. So I'm like, I'm really hoping he gets a love interest when he starts at Tommen and we get kind of like his side because he reminds me so much of Joey, but like a little bit more stable, obviously, because he's having like more of a stable environment now because they're with the Kavanaugh's. And I just, I need that story so bad. But yeah, that's my thought process right now. I'm gonna finish getting ready. Um, I need to just like wash my face brush my hair, brush my teeth. I haven't eaten yet. It's like an embarrassingly late around time. It's almost noon. Molly. Um, but I've just been having a lazy morning. Okay, leave me alone. Um, I worked way too much last week and I'm just kind of on the, like, I don't know. I'm just chilling this week. Um, I'm really hungry and I kind of want a coffee. I gotta like make my food myself food here and then go to Dutch Bros. I really want Dutch Bros. I've been craving Dutch Bros so bad. Last night I was at work and me and one of my coworkers, we were talking about coffee. Because <laughs> if you know, you know, like when you're working, especially working in like customer service, when you're like sitting behind the desk and you're like thinking about all the things that you really want, or like when you're really hungry, we were thinking about coffee and I was like, oh my god, I want a Dutch Bros coffee so bad right now. Um, so I think that's what I'm gonna go get, but after I, like, kind of finish getting ready, and I might read a little bit before I read, before I leave, and I also want to eat, um, and then I need to do laundry today, and I have, like, a crap ton of homework to do, so, yep, that's my day, and then I'm watching Sarah Crowley's new video, and Olivia Rodriguez's Guts Deluxe album came out today, and Jose Yuri's, like, new songs came out today. So it's a good day. It's a good day. It's 60 degrees outside. I'm wearing my cutie little sweater from Ireland last year. Perfect. I got this from Ireland last year and I'm reading about Irish people. It's perfect. What can I say? Um, but yeah, I'll let y'all go and I'll let you know next time I start reading again. Okay, so I finished Keeping 13. Um, and I finished this probably like a couple hours ago, um, but obviously final thoughts are five stars. I think, let me grab the other. Um, I think for some reason, Binding 13 was my favorite this time around. I remember first time reading Keeping 13, I liked a lot more for some reason, but I really liked Binding 13 more. Um, maybe it's just cause I feel like we get more events. I don't know. I still really liked Keeping 13, but the second half of Keeping 13 was kind of hard. I really like just the beginning of their relationship and like the beginning moments. Um, also, this sets up so well for Taming 7. Like, I'm so excited for Taming 7. Um, but yeah, those are like my final thoughts. And let this be your... Um, a uh, sign to either go reread your favorite books or just go reread the Boys of Tommen series if you haven't read them yet because <sighs> I love these books so much and I love Chloe Walsh's writing. Um, I also looked at like the novella but apparently it's like I didn't know what it was but apparently it's like excerpts from all of her other books. I didn't even know she had other books um, so I don't think I'm gonna read that just because it's like I thought it was like, for some reason, I thought it was like only J uh, Johnny and Shannon. And it was like, um, I don't know why I heard somebody talk about it. Like it was like something from like the summer or something. Like it was like something like that. It was like an excerpt from that, but it's not. It's like all like excerpts from all of her like books, like combined basically. Um, so I don't think I'm going to read that, but I love both of these. I'm obsessed with them. I love Boys of Tommen. I love Chloe Walsh. I love Irish boys. What can I say? So that's this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, if you liked it, give it a thumbs up. And then if you like any of these videos, if you like me, if you like this video, subscribe. Um, 
yeah bye guys